Hi, my friends. It's Ro. Welcome back. We are here with another installment of Michael and Carol Santos after prison. You guys had so many questions for them and they're answering one by one. Today, we lumped a few together because they were just real short answers. So we have a miscellaneous video of things like what Michael wanted for his first meal after prison. So many people ask that. Everybody always wants to know, like first question, what was the first meal you wanted after prison? So Michael answered that. He says he could eat this every day. They talk about communication and things like what they they didn't know about each other like give me a positive thing you didn't know about each other before prison that you found out after prison and give me a negative quality that you found out that your partner had you didn't know about it before prison and you found out after prison so this was just a really fun one the next one you guys I don't know what order I'm gonna post these but the next one or one of the next ones was so deep they talk about intimacy and they talk about family problems. But in the intimacy video, Carol touched on something that literally made me almost like anxiety attack. I love how I just make nouns, or verbs all the time. But anyway, start to like have an anxiety attack. And one of my biggest fears about my relationship with Adam after prison happened for Carol. Stay tuned for that one. That's probably my favorite video of all of the ones that they sent over, although all of them have been amazing. So wait for that. Make sure as always you give this video a thumbs up to let Michael and Carol know that you appreciate the time that they took to answer all of our questions. They're so dedicated to helping you. My subscribers, Strong Prison Lives and Families members, and they just want to use their experience for good. <music>
probably the most positive thing I didn't know about him was how affectionate and loving and devoted he would be all the time. And so that was really... Is that um, a positive or a negative? (laughs) 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 Probably has pluses and minuses. (laughs) He's an incredibly loving, devoted husband who always wants to take care of me and he he doesn't just talk about it he shows it in everything that he does and i knew that he was a loyal person and a hard worker you know through our letters and our visits and the fact that i went to prison for a long time but it was (laughs) it was really when he was released and we were together in the world um all the time that it was really clear that the depth of his commitment and devotion and affection um, was really positive. How about a quirky or a negative thing? Do you want me to do that one or do you want to oh, do that? Okay. The next question is one quirky or negative thing we didn't know about each other um, that I learned after release. So prison, uh, when you live in a community of men uh, for a very long time, there are behaviors that uh, that you don't think about and it's very normal in that environment that are not normal in the world so I would say that there were some prison behaviors that he brought home that um, he probably was not even aware of because it just becomes part of your you know how you live in the environment that you live in it's how you acclimate to your environment and so some of the, the, I don't know, guy things, I didn't like at all. And when I would point it out, he would actually kind of get annoyed with me because I don't think he realized things he was doing that I didn't like. Um, so that was something that we had to kind of work through together and it's just a normal part of adjusting to a different environment and becoming aware of your surroundings so we we got through most of that i don't have any negative things about say about carol i just have nothing but positive things to say about her because she made me happy every day and i still cry when i think about her because i just (laughs) i love her so much After getting home, did communicating become more difficult or change in a way to where you almost felt like you couldn't understand each other the same? The person who asked the question um, clarifies a little bit, elaborates. It says, just because I feel like we're both so much more open in our letters to each other than we used to be before he went in. We also use our letters to bring up more important topics so that we can have some form of understanding before we actually talk in person. Or do you believe being locked up just made you better communicators all around to where that wasn't an issue? This is my biggest fear since I know it's hard for a relationship to flourish without effective communication. He'll be out in a few years, so I want to know how I can make this part easier. I'll let you go first. You want me to go first? Yeah. um, Communication is, is, I think, the bedrock of any great relationship and any great love affair and you know, we communicate in a lot of ways, right? Not only with the words that we say or the words that we write, by the actions that we make. And so in my, on my part, I, I always say I would never ask anybody to do anything that I am not doing. And, and so I was very deliberate in my writing and I wrote every day. And we would measure those letters by writing them sequentially. So you know, I, I didn't start every letter with number one. I mean, it'd be one, and then the next day's letter might start at page number seven, and the next page letters might start at page number 13. And, you know, I think we got up to, I don't know, seven, eight, ten thousand 10,000 pages of letters that, that it really documents our love affair. And so I would say that for the person who asked this question, you also indicate that you were together before you went to prison. And that is different for us, right? Our relationship began with letters and didn't begin in love. It began with me trying to court Carol and win her heart, even though I was in prison. And it took a while. I don't know how long it took before you saw me as somebody that you could spend your life with, but you couldn't talk about that. 
Um, but we built our life together through letters, but also through planning. And it was not only planning for me, but it was planning for Carol because I was helping her understand the complications of being married to a man in prison. And she wanted to be with me, you know, everywhere. So we had to create a whole new career for her. And we were fortunate in that I was able to earn a living even from prison because I was a writer and that was, I, I cultivated that skill while I was in prison. I didn't go in there as a writer, but I learned that. And then everything I did was always with the school. Am I making Carol's life better? And there was always a plan and there was always a timeline. And she was with me for 10 years, but we were able to manage it and navigate it. And it was really because of what you had said in this question about the importance of communication. So I felt very close to Carol all through my journey. And I felt very close to her when I came home. And that's why I think that our life was able to withstand the challenges in ways that 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 people who never went to prison. I mean, our marriage has already been longer than most marriages. It's what, 17 years. Is it 17 or 18? 17. 17 years. So no, married 17. Married 17, 17 but together, together for 19. 19 years. And it's really because of communication and a constant effort to communicate. You know, even when it's hard, you communicate. And, and, and you can't be filled with happy talk and sugarcoating things. When things are hard, you talk about it and you figure out a way through. And that's what we do. So I, I definitely agree with the writer of this question that writing letters is a really um, thorough and therapeutic and um, really a great way to put all your thoughts out. Uh, sometimes when you're having a conversation, other person can jump in, uh, you don't get to finish your thought. And the, the beautiful thing about writing is you can really write out all of your thoughts and think about what you want to say and ha- take as much time as you need to say it. And that's why our courtship was really special. Um, we wrote thousands of pages of letters and it was so exciting to wait for the mail to come every day. And sometimes there would be 20 pages at a time and two envelopes filled with 20 pages. So it was, it was really um, an immersive way to build our relationship in a way that we both were able to say and answer and respond and ask um, all the way through. Um, I think that there are, because Michael is so intense in his work and he's driven and um, really focused, that that has been a challenge for us sometimes in communicating in person. Um, and we've had to really work on listening and hearing and giving enough time to, you know, to do what we would do in writing. Let me say everything I want to say so you can really hear me. Because I never interrupt. And if he's, <laughs> if, if he's not. All right, I heard enough. <laughs> if he's not hearing, if I don't feel heard, then I know that I'm not communicating it in a way that he's receiving it the way I intend. So a lot of it is about perspective and intention and, you know, coming at those kinds of conversations, the challenging ones, it has to be always with an understanding of intention first. You know, we love each other. We're committed to each other. We care for each other. And it's always remembering that, no matter what's being discussed or said, always remember the intention that the other person has is coming from a place of love. So before, you know, feelings get hurt or things get said, you have to really work hard at slowing down and thinking uh, about where the other person is coming from. And, And if it's a place of love, even though you don't like what they're saying, um, you have to work from that foundation. And it is definitely um, hard to have a relationship without communication uh, because you can shut that door without, you know, saying what you want to say and and the silence can be really loud. So I would 
just always recommend that, you know, before you shut the door on something, make sure you know where the other person's coming from and where their heart is. It makes it easier to listen, even when it's things you don't want to hear or don't want to talk about. That was a fun video. If you guys want to see other videos that Michael and Carol did for us in this series, just click that playlist there. And if you're not already subscribed, we're in a fight. We're in a fight. I'll wait for it. So just click that video there or the red button below. I'll wait because, you know, you want to be friends with me. Who doesn't want to be friends with me? <laughs> I love you and I'll see you in the next one.